Good morning and welcome to the word of the week. Last week's word was compassion and we went over that compassion means to show sympathy or concern for the sufferings of others. This week's word is contentment. Contentment is choosing to be satisfied with what God has given you. Now the opposite of Contentment is discontentment. Now discontentment means disappointment or dissatisfaction or a state of unhappiness. So we want to avoid being discontent in our lives because no one wants to be unhappy, right? We all want to be content or satisfied. Oftentimes we think that if we were rich or famous that we would be content. But this is not true. The wisest man in the Bible, known as King Solomon, had to find this out the hard way. So let's reference the book of Ecclesiastes 1 through 2, where it talks about how King Solomon discovered what real contentment was. So King Solomon was a man who had great power and riches. He could do anything he wanted and lived in a very rich lifestyle, full of all kinds of pleasures. He was a thinking man also and wrote about his life, his experiences and how he felt, and many of the things he thought would bring him happiness only brought sadness. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless, he wrote. Solomon noted that everyone dies and that when you die, you lose all things that you have made and bought and owned. What does a man get for all his hard work? He asked. He noticed that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west each day and follows the same path across the sky. He observed that the wind blows south and north here and there, twisting back and forth, getting nowhere. The rivers run into the sea, but the sea is never full, and the water returns to the river, and then flows again to the sea. Everything is weary and tiresome. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we are not content. The king looked at the cycle of life like seeds making plants that make seeds for new plants to grow. Whatever people did now had been done before and would be redone in the future. Every generation forgot the one before it. Whatever people said was lost and said again by each new generation. The king tried to find meaning in things that made him laugh. Come now, be merry, enjoy yourself to be full. But he found that this too was futile. For it is silly to be laughing all the time. What good does it do? He also tried to cheer himself up by drinking alcohol and getting drunk. He tried all kinds of fine wines and drinks. Futile, he said. The king then tried to find fulfillment by planning and big building projects. A magnificent palace, stables, and a temple. He built fine gardens and plantations, vineyards, gardens, parks, and orchards. He built reservoirs to hold water and irrigate his gardens and crops. King Solomon breed great herds and flocks, more than any of the kings before him. He collected silver and gold and taxes from many kings and provinces. He was the richest man on earth, but it did not bring him happiness. In the cultural arts, he organized men's and women's choirs and orchestras. Anything he wanted, he took and did not restrain himself from any joy. He even found great pleasure in hard work. He married beautiful women and had affairs with many other beautiful women, 
but he grew tired of them all, and they led him astray and away from God. So having tried all the pleasures of earth, what did the king conclude? He wrote, as I looked at everything I had tried, it was all so useless, a chasing of the wind, and there was nothing really worthwhile anywhere. Solomon realized that a life without God is meaningless. For who can eat or enjoy apart from him, he wrote. For God give those who please him wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Everything else is foolishness, like chasing after the wind. As you can see, Solomon never found contentment until he found God. And this is how you find real contentment. You choose to be satisfied with what God gives you. There is a promise from God that's found in scripture and it is our scripture memory. It comes from Philippians 4 and 19 and it reads, and my God, will meet all of your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ. Our challenge this week is to plant this scripture in your mind and in your heart. Well, that wraps up our morning devotion for this week. Remember to choose to be satisfied with what God gives you. This is what brings contentment. See you next week.